What is up, guys? It's Vince back here again with another Super Coach video. Uh, this time it is going to be the BBL team review. Uh, I guess you can already see it there, guys, but I will just go through it real quickly. Uh, look, guys, with BBL, at the end of the day, I am no expert in cricket. Uh, you know, I played footy and basketball as a junior and still play basketball actively, but cricket is not a sport I ever played. Um, so I'm definitely not an ex expert at this, but I did have a decent finish in BBL probably two seasons ago. I was top 1,000. Didn't actually play last season, but yeah, I've had one decent finish, and I think my biggest thing with BBL has always been not really knowing the players going in and out, you know, when they disappear from their sides, when they come back from their sides sort of thing, and that's always been my biggest struggle. Um, hopefully staying up to date with social media these days, uh, being a bit more active on that X account means that I can generally stay up to date with that. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that you guys are probably wondering, what are you doing up so early, Vern? It's it's barely past 8 o'clock. I didn't think you rose this early. And the answer is, I don't. I normally do not. Uh, but my dog always wakes me up at 7 a.m. to get fed, and I can't help but feed that boy. You know how he is. He's, he's too cute. Um, but I couldn't help myself afterwards. I lay down in bed, and I've been lying there for the last hour. My brain is just on you know, I'm just too addicted to the game of Supercoach. I just lay back down in bed. I was running through my head. Uh, me and DR did our podcast last night. So Supercoach with DR, he will be releasing that later this afternoon. Um, I had so much fun doing that. And I was just thinking of that. I was thinking of the BBL and I just, I just couldn't stop. I just couldn't turn the brain back off and go back to sleep. And I was like, you know what? Let's just get up and just do a team review video. Like, why not? Like, it's on the mind, I'm thinking about it, I might as well just go do it. Um, so, that's why we're here, guys, but yeah, I'm not going to go into great depth in these plays at the end of the day. I'm just more or less going to talk about, uh, I guess, the structure that I've set up here. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the team is looking, and I, I think, once again, we have a pretty straightforward team. Similar to, I guess, NBL, where it's a much smaller player pool than the AFL, so I think starting teams will look pretty similar overall. Um but then it will obviously branch out from there. Uh, but yeah, just, just starting off, I guess we got our wicket keepers. We got Sam Billings up there and we got uh, Sam Whiteman. I'm pretty sure it's both Sams. <laughs> um, but Billings, I think, is pretty straightforward. For those that don't know, I think there was news that DeCock isn't playing anymore. Uh, DR mentioned that in his most recent video. And with that, I think Billings is really the most next straightforward uh, wicket keeper that we have at the end of the day. Uh, just he's obviously got the triple to start he's very nice and cheap and then white man is also someone that he's been in good form for what i've heard um once again i don't really keep up to cricket outside of the bbl so it's really just what i'm hearing here so as i said i'm not gonna like don't listen to me there's much better podcasts out there this is really just to keep you up to date with what i'm gonna be doing with my team and i'll just keep you up to date with a weekly round review but yeah, Whiteman is apparently being in good form, and look, he's super cheap. It means that we're not spending much money in our wicket uh, keeper line, so it leaves a lot more money for us to play with in these other lines. So, uh, two players that are nice and cheap, get them out the way. Uh, now, jumping down to, uh, I guess, batsmen here. Once again, because I sort of played this game, not really last season, but the seasons before that, um, so I would play it two years ago, three years ago, a lot of the names that aren't the high tier picks anymore really still stand out to me. Um, I remember hearing somebody said that Tom Curran didn't even play last season because he's out injured, but look, when I opened this first up, Tom Curran's one of the first people I picked because from what I remember, Tom Curran was an absolute beast. Uh, you know, he's one that he bats pretty high and he bowls all the death overs. And one thing I remember from BBL is that you want people that are bowling in the death and usually bowling in the uh, power surges as well and the I forget what you call it, the uh, the early, like, four openings that they have um, as well. So uh, that's something that Tom Curran does. He plays in those overs where there's a lot more chances to get wickets. There's a lot more chances to go for runs. But you know what? If you can, uh, if you give up a few runs and you take a couple of wickets with it, that's that's fine by us on the Super Coach standard. Uh, next one's Aaron Hardy. Similar ball. Uh, my understanding is he's going to be batting high again. And he might come in and toss a few overs, which is what we want from our batters. We want batters that are going to bat high. It's something that's always happened with Maxwell. It's always happened with Short. It's always happened with Stoinis. Uh, not really happening with those guys anymore. I don't know if Maxwell still throws a few overs in there, but it doesn't really happen with Short and like Stoinis anymore. But when those guys were like the pinnacle of super coach, you know, top tier players, top echelon, like if you don't have them in your team, you, would, you just weren't playing the game right. Um, 
that's what they would do. They would bat high, usually open both of them, and then they'd come in and throw a few overs, and sometimes two or three, depending on how they were going. So, uh, yeah, Hardy seems to have that role, and that's just a super coach friendly role, so we're definitely picking up a player like that. Uh, next, we have Sutherland on the list. I believe Sutherland is similar to a current role. He's going to be in the 6-7. to seven. Uh, I don't know if he bowls the death. He might bowl, I think, I feel like he used to bowl the death, even when he was a very cheap player. Um, obviously, he's much more expensive now, so he's clearly, you know, really picked up over the last season or so. Um, just, he was a young player when I used to watch him, so obviously it just takes a little bit of time to get used to that level and, you know, come into your own. So, good to see that he's obviously done that last year. Also, Renegades have this crazy good run, and look, I want more Renegades players in this team, but it's super hard to do. It's, it's honestly super hard to do. Like, I just, there's none that jump out to me that I can just put in there and feel happy about. And once again, that might just because be because I didn't really play last season that the players that we're seeing, they, they don't stand out to me as much as these other names that do, um, which uh, Scobie Bryant was very big on not picking players just from their names. But, I mean, when you take a season off and um, you're not really a big cricket fan, all you can really do is remember the names that were hot two, three seasons ago, so it's hard to look past them. <laughs> uh, we have Colin Monroe now playing for Brisbane. Um, I don't know if this is his first season at Brisbane or if he moved to Brisbane last year. Uh, he was definitely at Perth last time I saw him. Uh, but once again, Brisbane had this great early run. He's going to be batting up in the order, and he just really needs to fire in like probably one of these games and not be terrible in maybe one other game, and you're going to get a good score out of him. So we've got the VC on him at the moment. Uh, and then Philippi is someone that's always been a gun. He's someone that we used to pick up, well, we, we picked up very cheap a couple of years ago and ended up being a gun, made us a lot of money. Then the following year, you picked him up as a mid-pricer and he ended up being a gun that was like 200k by the end of it. Uh, and now he's back down to 100k. So, I, I mean, this is what happens with batters. He's a wicket keeper slash bat batter, so obviously being a wicket keeper, he's in a good position to get points at least off catches and stumpings and stuff. Uh, but he bats the opening for the order and sometimes this happens you come in you face a good ball and you just go out early and clearly that's happened a lot last year and he's dropped down the mark um, but I do remember uh, for the inside boys brain was talking about how Philip he plays much better at the SCG than any any other ground like his stats are much higher at the SCG and they are opening at the SCG and he is such a cheap price too like 102k it, it's very affordable price at the end of the day and if he does come out with a big game, he'll make us money from the word go. So, yeah, seems pretty good to me. Uh, next one is we have Short in there. Look, I, I don't know what to say. As I said, I didn't see last year. Obviously, Short is clearly just isn't the same Short that I remember. But um, look, it might be the same problem I had with McRae in AFL this year. Is you just see an absolute superstar, a king of their game. And you see them at a cheap price, and you just be like, I I can't not get them, sort of thing. So, look, Short is sitting there at the moment. Um, that may not be the correct pick, but you know what? He's there. Why not? <laughs> uh, then we also have Fraser McGurk sitting there, someone who might be batting, might not be batting. Look, with some of these players, it might come down to literally the start of the games. I'm going to be checking them out before the games start, checking out if they got the green light next to their name and they're actually playing. And if they're not then we'll have to do some rearranging at the last second. But as long as you have those ideas in your head that you know what you're going to be rearranging for, then it's perfectly fine. Um, I mean, look, when me and DR were talking last night, he mentioned that Nisa might actually be someone that doesn't play in the PM's 11, meaning he may be available for B uh, BBL, uh, which would be pretty nuts, but definitely something to keep our eyes on for if he does get named for that round one game. Because if he does get named for round one, it means he definitely is going to like, I, my understanding is he'd definitely play all three of these games. So, look, we have definitely ways to get to him. We have Sutherland going up to him. We can move any of the Adelaide boys to him. Um, sorry, Adelaide. Any of the Sydney boys to him. Uh, yeah, we, we have the cash to be able to jump to him, and that's not really going to bother me doing that. I know a lot of people are probably avoiding Sixers players just because they don't really have too many doubles, but the only difference there is they do have a little bit of consistency since they don't have... They only have the one double and anything all singles all year, is that at least they're not going to be on their buys. Um, saying that buys aren't as painful on this as they are to the NBL, which we're playing currently, because your bench players don't score. 
Um, so at the end of the day, you just throw them to the bench and it's not a big deal if you've got the coverage for it. Um, yeah, so jumping down, then we have Sean Abbott uh, starting off our bowlers. Now, once again, a super, like, a name that you can't just, like, sort of look past, in my opinion, for a BBL standard. Like, I remember picking him up in my last two seasons, and any time you had him, it was just money. You threw the C on him, and you were just golden for the week. He was just so good when he was playing uh, BBL. Uh, next one is Coulton Nile, which you might think is a little bit questionable. Look, I remember Coulton Nile always coming in, starting off hot, everyone get, trying to get on him, and then being garbage throughout the year. And this was something that, uh, once again, the Inside Boys uh, brain and Supercoach Big Horse were talking about, that Coulton Nile's actual round one scores are insanely good for BBL. I think he went back over the last four, and it's like... Uh, look at like a 200, like a 70, a 90, and then like a 150. And it's like, he always starts off hot and then he drops off sort of thing. Well, you know what? I'm going to play the odds here and say he starts off hot. Um, if, if he does come out hot, that's going to be awesome for us. He's a low percentage owned player. Um, I don't think it's going to show me how many teams own him right now because I'm not trick clicked on trades, but I'm pretty sure he's very, um, Look, I'm just going to click on it this way because it should tell me through here. Here we go. This is where it's going to say the owner percentage. He's very under-owned. So only 2% of people are on him, which is pretty cool in a pod sort of aspect. But he's someone that's going to show up from around one and pop off. And well, hopefully he's going to pop off. And then what happens is stars have a buy. And for most people, we are all planning to get Matt short by round two. At the end of the day, it's an unlimited trade format. So we want three players that we're going to move on, no problem. Coulton Nile is that guy I am definitely moving on. He is going to be there for literally game one and two. And then game three, I'm going to move, be, move him up to Matt short. That's my plan with him. So it doesn't matter if he ends up burning out after game one, injuries, niggles, whatever come into effect. I just need him to show up for round one pop off and then we're golden so that's my plan with Colton Nile uh, at this stage and why it's set up like that I'm just going to click back on my team to get that off the screen cool <laughs> uh, next one is Zampa once again playing at Renegades which is really funny to see um, don't think I've I, it just, it, I find that very funny just entertaining wise to see all these players that have just changed teams like especially like these well-known players players that like Zampa, there's like imagine if Maxwell moved clubs or Abbott moved clubs. Like these are just players that you're very used to seeing those symbols next to them, and to just see like a different symbol next to them, like Shorts Adelaide. Like I just find that so funny to look at. Like damn, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Zampa. Look, obviously everyone's talking about his red hot form at the moment. I I'll be honest, he was in my team before I even knew about red hot form because I saw Zampa, nice cheap price, and I was like, yeah, cool, seems good to me. Let's throw him on in. Now I've looked at the schedule a bit more, and I wish I had more Renegades players, but it's just not something I have right now. Uh, look, the only sixer I'm really contemplating departing with would be Philippi, but even departing with Philippi, I'm, I'm just not sure where I'd be going with that. Um, I don't really want any more Brisbane players. I'm perfectly fine with the three we have, and then potentially Nisa if needed. Um, so it would be a Renegades player, but there's just... Look, I don't know. There's, there's none that jump out to me as like, the ones that I want. Um, everyone talks about how Finch and Sean Marsh are probably a bit cooked at this point. Uh, I guess you have Joe Clark is the other opening batsman, but he's not someone I really know. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, when I used to play BBL two years ago, it wasn't like I just played BBL. I generally sit down and watch these games. Like I can't help myself when I'm invested in a super coach to actually sit down and, and watch the games. Like super coach just makes me love watching the sport. I can't help but sitting there watching the numbers as they're hitting the ball. Every time they get a four, four extra points, they get a wicket. Uh, I'm pretty sure 25 extra points. You know, I, I just can't help but just sit there and just count the numbers as, as I'm watching the sport. And look, Clark isn't someone um, that I feel like I know. And if he did, did Clark used to play for stars maybe? Maybe. I, I don't know. He just, he's not someone that's ringing my bells. Um, yeah, I just... I just don't know these other Renegade players to be able to jump on them, unfortunately. Um, I mean, they do have uh, Moon and B. I, I don't know, used to play for Brisbane. Um, similar price to Zampa, who's a spinner. But I feel a bit awkward putting two Renegade spinners here. That just feels... I don't know, it just, just feels weird there. I, I, I don't know, maybe that, that is the answer, but yeah. Anyway, jumping down. Sorry, we've got Maxwell coming here. I, I digress, guys. I'm so sorry. We all know I can't help but ramble. 
Maxwell, I think, is an easy pick for everyone. Once again, one of those names that, like, when I jump in, I couldn't help but put in my opening team. I see him at a cheap price, and I'm just like, damn, that just that just seems like value. But at the same time, that obviously means he was bad last year. So is it value? I don't know. Then I've heard all the talk, and the answer is, yes, he's value. He's, he's insane, apparently. Sorry, been in insane form in other games, not BBL recently, other formats of the game. Um, and then we have Walter down here, uh, honestly, Scoby Bryant, which is very hot on Walter, and I just needed other Brisbane players, and it just seems like he's nice and cheap, slots in with DPP, makes life very easy for us. Uh, just jumping to the bench, sang out once again, somebody that I actually originally picked on field because someone that I just, I just, two seasons ago, he was expensive, he was good, I remember when you got him as a rookie, he was so good for us, so someone I couldn't help but pick up, um, I think last year, I heard somebody say he missed it all because he was away with Australia, uh, which makes sense at the end of the day. He is a superstar, so uh, which is it's always nice to see a player nice and cheap because their career went well and they've obviously gone off and done other things and maybe something's happened and they've returned. But it's always nice to see they're cheap for that reason, not because they've just been you know because they had an awful last season. Uh, and then Cooper Connolly sitting there at the moment. Uh, my understanding is that Perth might have picked up a new spin bowler, so maybe he isn't the pick. But look, we have money to go up, down, left, right if we really need, or we'll, we'll figure out what we need to do when teams are released. Perth is obviously a bit of a harder one because they start much later. So if we're making a last decision, last second decision on Perth, the only teams we're going to have available are Perth, Hobart, and Thunder. So I need to figure that one out before we get to Perth's game. Um, it, it's got to be figured out before the, probably the first two games so that I can get to someone reasonable. Um, but look, the, we're one day away. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited for it. I actually thought games might have started tonight. Another reason why I decided let's just get out of bed and get it done. Because, uh, you know what, I just wanted to get the team out there. So, yeah, look, guys, you're probably not looking at me for advice team-wise. If I had to be honest, if anything, leave me comments to help me because you guys probably know this better than me. Um, I just know the super coach aspect more than the cricket aspect but look this is how the team's looking I'm pretty happy with how it's looking I was pretty happy with how it was looking when I had to cook in there instead of Sutherland but look making that little switch isn't the end of the world and that bit of extra cash means that as I said if Nisa comes back in we can easily make the move to him and as I said the only thing that's really subject to change is if Nisa comes in depending on players getting named obviously that can subject change but the only other one would be maybe Philippi out uh, and maybe try and find another Renegades player I could obviously flex him down and get, uh, as I mentioned, Murren B, I'm probably butchering his name, from Renegades. And, and maybe that's a better play than what I've currently got. But yeah, anyway, thanks for tuning in, everyone. It's a nice short video for us all. Uh, as I said, stay tuned for DR's video game released later today. I'm, I, I had an absolute blast with him last night. So much fun recording that uh, and even just chatting around it as well. You know, we were probably talking um, for longer than we were recording, like, Sorry, like talking like outside of the recording for longer than we were recording because we're just, we're just having a blast. And yeah, I had so much fun there. So I hope that you all jump into that and you all enjoy that video as much as I did. Uh, it, it was just so good to get through it. So anyway, um, till next time, guys. Peace. Later.